The results are in. At least when I started to make this video, you guys wanted me to look at the Voodoo 3. This Voodoo 3 is a donation from Michael, a viewer of the channel. I would like to thank you once more for this great card. Michael told me that he found this Voodoo 3 at a recycling center a few years ago. If it wouldn't be for him, it is almost certain that this card would have been taken apart and this video would have never been made. Although the card works, it does have a few issues that I noticed when visually inspecting the components on the card. The back of the card is component free. And although we can see a few empty spots for capacitors around the graphics chip, the pads don't show any signs of solder applied by the factory. So let's check the front of the card. In the top left quadrant we can see a lot of empty solder pads. All this space seems to be reserved for an optional S-Video and a second VGA connector. Then we have the BIOS chip. 8 memory chips with a total capacity of 16 MB and the Voodoo 3 chip below the heatsink, which has one of its fins bent. If we look at the very end of the card, we see a row of capacitors. There are supposed to be 3 of those aluminum capacitors. But capacitor 130 is missing. You can still see the imprint of the legs in the solder. The capacitor in the bottom right corner is badly scratched. Although this may not inhibit the proper functioning of the component, it doesn't look nice. In today's video, I will be replacing these capacitors and see if we can find anything else wrong with this card that may have been caused by throwing it into the recycling bin. But before we continue, let me tease you about another 3DFX project I am working on with the support of PCBWay. After learning some basics about PCB design, I have successfully placed my first order with PCBWay. The ordering process was straightforward and now I am following the production status in the online portal. PCBWay is the ideal partner if you require custom PCBs, 3D printing or CNC services. And if you sign up as a new customer, you will get a 5 US dollar welcome bonus. Check out PCBWay.com and turn your ideas into reality. Now we are under the microscope and I am looking at the scratched capacitor. Those surface mounted capacitors have the legs sitting below the component. Only a small portion is visible on the sides. To remove this capacitor, I will just heat up one side with a soldering iron and try to lift one side of the board. Then I will try to do the same on the other side. As you can see, the 20 year old solder doesn't want to melt easily. The solution is to add fresh solder. And then I can easily lift one side of the capacitor of the board. I also decided to remove the second one for some reason. You may think, that capacitor looked fine. Why do you remove this one as well? That's just me trying to be consistent I guess. But you will see later why this was a good decision. And now the other sides. This will be a bit more difficult because the capacitor is tilted to one side and there is just less space available. The soldering iron with preloaded fresh solder probably would have worked. But after the first unsuccessful try, I decided to add flux. My favorite activity when soldering, applying flux. And there we go. That was super easy now. Let's move on to the second capacitor. I tried not to pull too hard on the capacitors to avoid ripping out any pads from the board. I have done that in the past and I'm sure I will do it in the future. Just not today, please. So far so good. Now one last turn to the other side and we should finally get both of them off the board. There we go. The first one is off. Now on to the second one. Since both capacitors are off the board now, we can start cleaning the pads from the old solder. Believe it or not, I haven't used solder wick that often, but I noticed that using a bit of flux helps the solder flow into the copper wick much easier. I guess it depends on the quality of the wick. There is supposed to be some flux inside the wick to help the solder flow, but I guess this wick is quite old and not of high quality. Anyway, I think the best thing is to just do it and practice. The first time, it won't be perfect. You may end up soldering the wick to the board like this. Yeah, I'm not a professional, just trying my best here.
Here are the two capacitors I took off the board. And here are the three new ones. Now I will tell you why I'm happy that I removed the second capacitor as well. The one that didn't look like it needs to be replaced. When it was removed from the board, the black plastic base was loose and barely attached to the capacitor. And then it just fell off when I tried to make them pose under the microscope. You can see here that the supposedly good capacitor is badly dented at the bottom. Bottom. <laughs> that must have come from a harsh hit against it and most likely broke off the leg on the opposite side. Okay, let's move on and get the replacements. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember when I bought those capacitors and I'm pretty sure that I got them from AliExpress. So they may not be of high quality, but I checked their capacitance and they seem to be okay. I'm not too worried about the voltage rating because the PCI bus only supports a maximum of 5 volts, a lot lower than the specified 16 volts on the markings. Let's get them attached to the board with fresh solder and of course, flux. You may have spotted this area already. This is the memory chip closest to the PCI connector. It looks like a bad hit to the memory chip cracked the housing. And there is also an empty capacitor pad. If I would have checked online for other Voodoo 3 pictures, then I would have noticed that this capacitor is missing on all Voodoo 3 cards. Surprisingly, this is the only component around the memory section that is not populated. So forgive me when I thought that the crack in the memory chip and the empty spot are related and stem from an impact on the card. To measure the capacitance of the original capacitor, I had to remove it from the board. C129 is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. I noticed my mistake after I was done with this project. In hindsight, I know better now, but it's weird that this component is the only one that is missing in that area. Could it actually be a manufacturing mistake? Was it cost cutting? Or is this capacitor really not needed? Good luck finding someone who can answer this question. I had better luck finding a spare capacitor with the correct value. Let me put both SMD capacitors back on the board. And here's the final result of my work, including C129, which probably means that this is the only Voodoo 3 card in existence that has this capacitor installed. Let's try the card and see if it still works. Okay, that's good, the card is still working. I don't know if adding those capacitors did anything positive to the card, but maybe the memory is more stable which allows it to clock higher in a future overclocking video. I'd like to see if I can close the gap between this card and the Voodoo 3 3000. Maybe even the 3500. And now maybe some trivia about the Voodoo 3 drivers that came on CD. You've already seen a short clip at the beginning of this video. If you press the lower tip of the tail of the letter Q, someone yells the following. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh my 
I can say is wow! And if you click on the top center edge of the first letter L in the word install, some funny reptile is appearing from the right eye. With the drivers installed, let's test the card with Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Top right you see the frame rate displayed by using the tool Fraps. Fraps only works with DirectX and OpenGL. So we're definitely using DirectX and the game is rendered in Direct3D. But did you know that this game has native support for Glide from 3DFX? Glide is only enabled by default for the Voodoo 1 and the Voodoo Rush cards. All other 3DFX cards run in DirectX mode. To change this, we have to get into the game directory and find the 3D setup folder. In there should be a file called 3dsetup.ini with several graphic cards listed. Find the Voodoo 3 entry, in my case the last card listed, and change the text from DX to Voodoo 2. Save the file and voila! Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed should use Glide with this Voodoo 3 from now on. You will be able to tell because Fraps will no longer show the frame rate counter at the top right corner. Unfortunately, we won't be able to tell now at what frame rate our game is running. But to be honest, I didn't notice any difference in the short time I tested the card. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed performed well with both APIs. So let's run the Unreal benchmark quickly to see if there is a difference between Glide and Direct3D. In Direct3D, the average frame rate is 73 frames per second. And the same is true for the Glide API. I guess it comes down to the game and what API is supported better. Go! This project is now complete and I'm happy that I have a 3DFX Voodoo 3 card with PCI interface. Maybe we can try this card in a few older systems, like a Pentium MMX and the K6 family. And with this, we're at the end of this video. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel. Someday I may tell you how you can turn your Porsches into small remote cars. Or how you can change the textures and make every Porsche promote your YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.